What's up, my people? It's pretty cool, the idea that we can just talk to God at any time, anywhere, about anything. Yeah, you heard me. You can talk to God and know that he's always listening. Want to know how I know? Let's dive into the Bible. Check this out. There were these people called Pharisees, not great people at all. Here's the deal. Everything they did was to impress other people, and they were even trying to impress God, which is actually not something they could do anyway, but we'll get to that in a second. Here's the thing about these people. If they were doing something kind, it was so other people would notice it. If they were praying in a crowd, they would talk super loud and use a lot of words to try to make themselves sound better than others. But when Jesus entered the scene, he had something to say about it. Jesus told people not to be like the Pharisees, thinking God would be impressed with all of their words. Whoa! Straight up called out by Jesus. Jesus said that because he knew this cool thing about God. He cares most about who we are when no one else is watching. God loves us and wants us to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, even when no one else is there. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6:6 6, 6, that when we pray, we should go into our room, close the door, and pray to our Heavenly Father, even though we can't see Him. God just wants us to talk to Him about what's on our hearts. Jesus said that our Father God will reward us because He sees what we do in secret. Amazing! I'm here for that. Here's something else you need to know about prayer. It's that God already knows what we need before we ask Him but he's all ears anyway. Jesus showed us how to pray to God. He said to pray like this. Our Father in heaven, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come and that what you want will be done here on earth the same as it is in heaven. Give us the food we need for each day. Forgive our sins just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. Don't let us be tempted, but save us from the evil one. If we follow Jesus' example in prayer, we can simply, one, tell God how great he is, and he is really great. Two, tell him that we want what he wants for our lives and ask him to give us what we need. And three, ask him to forgive our sins and help us when we think about doing the wrong things. Pretty cool, right? Here's the deal. Opening up our hearts to God grows our friendship with him. You can tell him about your worst days, your best days, and everything in between. God just wants you to talk to him. And take some time to listen too, because he's got things to say to you. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get after it. My people, Jack here. It's so cool to have you hanging with me today. Right now, we're chilling with some of the coolest Arctic animals around. That's right, we're digging into the life and times of sled dogs. Now, you may be thinking that sled dogs are just like any other dogs and that they just so happen to live outside and love to play in the snow. Well, it's so much more than that, my friends. Here's the deal. These mush puppies are incredible athletes. Their bodies are built for racing in the coldest of conditions with a double coat of fur and extra thick paws. Their tails even come in handy for keeping their noses warm as they sleep. The only reason that these competing canines take a snooze is to have the energy to run. You heard that right, check it. The fastest of sled dogs can run over 1,000 miles in as few as eight days. Crazy, huh? But sled dogs can't win on their own, my friends. There is one key component to the success of a sled dog team, and it's their connection they have with their musher. That's what the team's human is called. Mushers make sure their dogs are taken care of and trained up to be the best of the best. Their musher even keeps them on track as they speed through the most treacherous terrain. You wanna know what I think is the coolest? It's that the pup and the musher speak the same language. Yeah, you heard that right. 
Now, we all know that humans in our neck of the woods speak English, and doggos speak, well, bark. But believe it or not, when they learn how to communicate with each other, victory for their team is in the bag. From the time a sled dog is just a tiny little puppy, it's learning how to recognize the musher's voice and understand what he's telling it to do. That sled dog is learning commands like, all right, which means they need to be alert and ready to go at any moment. Hike, which means get moving. And whoa, which means to stop. But the dogs aren't the only ones listening. Check this. There are tons of ways a musher can know what his dogs are saying, thinking, and feeling. When a pup is happy, their ears will be up and their tails will be wagging, and you'll even catch them smiling. When you hear them barking and howling, those are signs of an excited sled dog too. But if their ears are down, you might be dealing with one angry pupper. And tails tucked and ears down means something has got them spooked. Here's another cool thing. Just like the dogs and their mushers have to communicate in order to win, we have to open up our hearts in order to communicate with God. God is our Heavenly Father who is always taking care of us, like a musher takes care of his canine companions. But like any winning sled dog, we have to learn how to talk to our musher and listen for his voice. Just like mushers don't talk in the same way their dogs do, God doesn't talk in a voice like ours either. But when our hearts learn what he sounds like and we listen to him, victory is ours. My friends, we've got to always be open to what God has to say. And here's the deal. Talking to God will for sure grow our friendship with him. So what are we waiting for? Hike!
read your word Open up my heart I want to worship you When I get quiet And I read My father, you're my best friend And you love me, you hear me That will never end hey! I'll seek you, I'll find you I'll give you my praise And I will follow 